as you uh, in time pointed out, about 48 members have spoken and in uh, fairly great detail. And therefore, I would think it's my honor to be here and uh, respond to many of the observations made by the honorable members. Members have taken very keen uh, interest and have also gone through the details of the budget which is presented, a budget which is for Atmanirbhar Bharat. So it's a budget which clearly draws on the experience, the administrative uh, capacities, and also the exposure that the Prime Minister has had during his long elected tenure, both as Chief Minister and as Prime Minister of this country, known for his commitment towards development, growth, and reform. So these three things are essentially infused in the budget, which is now speaking for itself in the sense it is the instrument through which Atman Nirbhar Bharat is to be attained. So post-pandemic and post-global contraction, economies have suffered all over the world. And as I said during my budget speech, the attempt made in this budget is to provide stimulus, provide a strong stimulus, and provide such a stimulus which can bring in that kind of a multiplier effect, and therefore, instead of finding quick short-term short solutions, even as we provide short-term quick relief for those people who so desperately need it, we are looking at also medium-term, long-term, sustainable growth, which will keep India in that kind of a growth trajectory, which will maintain us as one of those fastest growing economies in the world. So government has heard views, opinions, suggestions from experts, from various policy makers around in the country, economists from several parts of the country and also some from outside, and then placed all the thoughts together to produce this budget, which has been tabled in the House. Building an Atmanirbhar Bharat actually reflects the aspiration of the, hun of the people of India, 130 crore people of India, many of whom, two thirds of whom are youth who are looking for opportunities, look, looking for dignified ways in which they can live their lives, contribute towards building of this country, and therefore are looking not merely for just assistance from government, but also facilitation and building of such ecosystems with which they can contribute to the economy. So the stimulus is for revival and systemic reforms that e even during the pandemic that the Prime Minister has taken up and those reforms are the ones which are going to sustain the growth, sustain uh, ease of doing business, and sustain India as the leader in terms of entrepreneurial skills. And uh, therefore, the blend of looking at stimulus provision and also not losing out on the opportunity that we can derive, even though we are living in a uh, pandemic situation, to reform and make India a better uh, managed, better governed country for our youth. So the relief and succor which was so required for our uh, poor, for those uh, people who were very much outside of their villages, outside of their states, was so distinctly provided. I think many of us have observed it, many of them have been repeated, but it is worth mentioning just once that 800 million people were provided free food grains, free cooking gas were provided for 80 million people, and cash directly was given to 400 million people, farmers, um, women, divyang, and also the poor and needy. So uh, an immediate response as soon as the lockdown was announced has actually provided that so much required succor, which is absolutely necessary to support our citizens. The PM Garib Kalyan is valued at 2.76 lakh crores, which is a timely measure 
that was necessary to be taken. Now, even before I get into some of the details which many of the members of honorable members have raised as issues, saying can we have a bit of a, a clarity, will it uh, assure some uh, kind of a steps and so on, I just want to straight away address one issue, sir. Chairman, sir, it's, uh, it's now become a sort of habit for some in the opposition to constantly allege whatever this government is doing in spite of all that we're doing for the poor and more needs to be done and that is uh, not denied at all. In spite of the various steps, obviously seen steps taken for helping the poor and needy of this country, a false narrative is created to accuse, saying, oh, this government works only for cronies. I just want to come up with some details before I get into some of the details in the budget to say, houses completed under PM Awaz Yojana, sir, more than 1.67 crore houses have been completed. Is that for the rich? Households which have been electrified under Saubhagya since 2017 October is more than 2.67 crores. Is that for the rich? Total value of orders placed on government e-marketplace uh, is 8,22,077 crore, which is more than 8 trillion of rupees. Are they being given to big companies? They are being given to MSMEs. So uh, we, uh, we have helped out small and medium companies to ensure themselves getting a market. Is that for the rich and the big capitalists? Length of the road sanctioned under Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana is, and that is strictly between 2014-15 and those years, 2,11,192 kilometers. Those roads go to villages. Are they villages only for the rich or are they villages where people who belong to the lower sections of the society also live? Are they villages where Garib don't live? So whose lifeline are these roads? So unthinkingly just keep throwing allegations saying, oh, this is for crony capitalists, this government is working only for the rich. Please answer these questions. Total verified applications on national scholarship portal, more than nine crore people and all of whom are getting fellowships. For whom are these fellowships going? Are they going for the rich? Are they going for the capitalists? Are they going for the cronies who the UPA government had happily encouraged? And now to stand up and each time create a false narrative. Before I get into the details of the budget, I want these questions to be kept in mind much before false narratives are thrown at us. Number of farmers registered on ENAM, sir, approximately 1.69. ENAM was thanks entirely due to the Prime Minister's effort to make sure that the farmers are connected all over the country and he's not constricted by the local markets. If he has opportunities better anywhere else, he should have it. Are these farmers rich corporate farmers? No, not at all. They're the small farmers. Number of digital transactions served via UPI from August 2016 till January 2020. More than 3.6 lakh crores UPI is used by who? The rich? The corporate? No, not at all. The middle class, the smaller traders, all of them use UPI. So who are these people then? Is this government creating UPI, facilitating digital transactions to benefit some rich cronies, some damads? Not at all. It is helping only the poor. Number of farmers registered, sir, under PM Fasal Bhima Yojana, almost 9 crore farmers. Farmers who benefit out of Fasal Bhima Yojana are not large corporate farmers. So, when you allege us, saying you're not taking care of uh, small and medium-sized farmers, Prime Minister, while standing and speaking in response to the debate on presidential address, spoke extensively about small farmers. And I want to remind you of this number, which is the number which benefits from PM Fasal Bhima Yojana. For whom is that? 
loan sanctioned under Mudra Yojana. More than 27,000 crores have grown under the Mudra Yojana. Who takes Mudra Yojana? Damads? Therefore, please, don't you allege us much before. Please. 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 Sir, Damad, I didn't think I have a trade back of the Indian National Congress. Damad, it's not going on record. Why are you wasting your energy? Specialized Nam here. No, no, let us not be disturbed about Damad. Let us go up with our district. You're not going on record. Your vocal card will be broken. Please. Thank you, sir. Sir, total number of beneficiaries under PM Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana, 6,000 rupees directly through the direct benefit transfer to small and medium-sized farmers. 11 crore farmers have received PM Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana. I can go on like this to say, enough and more evidence exists on no, it's not enough. You don't have the patience to hear more. No, he is satisfied, ma'am. You continue. Sir, yes, sir. He's, but uh, he's saying he's satisfied. Sometimes running commentaries are useful to remind, sir. Yeah. Don't worry. So, this government's efforts with credible proof of who the beneficiaries are, which are the major schemes, and therefore when the budgetary provisions are made, it is made for the poor, Dalits, tribals, and the students who need desperately all the benefits. And therefore, if you want to speak out, Ujbala Yojana benefited how many women? And we've extended it to one more crore women for whom that Ujbala will be delivered. 